Hi everyone, I'm Josh with Northern Frogger and today we are doing a frog room tour. Um, it's been over a year since the last tour so it's well overdue um, but this is not just any frog room tour. I will be doing a full tour of all my animals. Um, if you're new here I do mostly keep dart frogs but I also have a couple other animals like some lizards and some snakes. Uh, so you'll get to see all those guys. Um, but this frog room tour in particular is special because it's actually going to be the very last uh, frog room tour in this frog room. So this is the last time you're going to get to see everything uh, set up like how it is now uh, because I'm actually moving again, uh, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, never fun to move everything, especially with this many tanks and animals, but um, I think it's going to be good. The new frog room is going to be much bigger, so, so it should be bigger and better than ever. Uh, I've got a little bit of room to upgrade, um, make some bigger tanks for some of the animals that uh, are kind of overdue for some upgrades here, so that's going to be a big priority in the new frog room. Um, and it's coming up right away here, it's actually a Wednesday when I'm recording this and I'm going to be moving on Monday, so uh, basically right after I finish filming this I'm actually going to be starting to kind of take stuff apart and tear things down. Um, so the next time you see this, other than maybe a moving video, um, it will probably be in the new setup. Uh, so one thing to mention is that uh, you know animals don't always cooperate so as I go around filming here uh, we might not see all of the animals but I will as per usual try to splice in some videos or at least some pictures of the animals so you at least get to see what everybody looks like. Um, but because um, this frog room is not quite big enough I do have some animals in some other parts of the house here so we're actually going to start the tour outside of the frog room um, probably the furthest away with my aquarium and we'll work our way back in here. Uh, so let's get to it. All right, so getting started here. Um, I am using a new lavalier microphone here, uh, which I have only tested briefly, so hopefully the audio is okay for you guys. Um, but yeah, this is my aquarium. This is a 29 gallon tank. Um, I've got a hang on back filter over there and a sponge filter in that corner. Uh, it's a planted tank. It's mostly just been overgrown uh, with crypts. Um, as far as fish, we've got uh, some emerald eye rasboras, a school of those guys. We've got a few cardinal tetras, um, a few guppies left in there. I've mostly thinned out uh, the guppy population because they were just going crazy and taking over. Um, there's still a few cherry shrimp in there, uh, kind of hiding out. Um, one thing with the new place, with a little bit more room, I would like to try and uh, set up another dedicated shrimp, shrimp tank. There's also a long fin bristle nose pleco in here somewhere. Oh, right on the back wall there. You can see that guy, he's still pretty tiny. Got him fairly recently, but uh, he seems to be doing really well. Oh, and I think there's still a few Amano shrimp uh, left in here too. Um, they always make me think that they've died off because I go for weeks without seeing them and then all of a sudden they'll just all be out uh, grazing on some plants here. So uh, they're still in there somewhere, but don't see them very often. Uh, moving on from the aquarium, over here, we have one of the big Exoterra uh, three foot by three foot by 18 vivariums. This is actually my girlfriend's tank. Um, and she's got a pair of powder blue Tinctorius in here somewhere, um, as well as a few babies around that they've kind of raised themselves in the ponds that she's got in the back there. And there are a couple morning geckos in this one as well. So next we go over here. This was a tank I uh, completed very recently. This is another three foot by three foot by 18 Exoterra. And it's mostly just full of bromeliads, uh, but there is also four of my Ranadomea variabilis southerns. You can see one in the back over here. One of my favorite frogs, uh, which is why I gave them such a huge tank. Um, they do have tadpoles in a lot of these bromeliads right now. So I'm really loving this tank uh, so far. All the Brahms seem to be doing pretty well, except for apparently this one that is kind of fallen over here. Uh, this one is kind of weird because I don't have an actual substrate in here yet, just because I knew I was going to be moving soon. I knew I'd probably have to be taking it out anyway to reduce the weight in here, so I just didn't bother for now. There's just kind of... Uh, some moss and water in the bottom, um, but these frogs are fairly arboreal. They mostly spend their time just hopping around on the leaves of the Brahms here, so it's not that big a deal, um, but I will put a proper substrate in here um, at some point when we get to the new place. So then up above them, we have a three foot uh, by two foot tall by 18 Exoterra. 
and this one houses my smooth-sided toad. This is Anthony Hopkins, and uh, he's still doing pretty well. Don't see a ton of these guys in the hobby, uh, but they are very cool toads. He's actually pretty active in here. I see him out and about quite a bit. Uh, but then moving on down over here, uh, this is actually another one of my girlfriend's pets. Uh, this is her hamster, Wonton. Uh, he's currently sleeping in his little ball over here. And then over to this side, oh, uh, one of the misters just kicked on, so I'll just give that a second. All right, sorry about that. Mister is turned off now. Um, so this is a uh, four foot aquarium, I think it's the 90 gallon, and this one houses my pair of fire skinks. Uh, they are fossorial, so I don't get to see them quite as much as I would like. They spend most of their time kind of buried in the substrate there, so I've got a nice thick bed of the uh, coconut core. Uh, but these guys are really cool animals as well. This was a pretty recent acquisition, uh, but they're doing really well so far it seems. Pretty sure I've got a pair here, so I'm hoping to get some breeding out of these guys in the future. And then we'll do a quick stop in the kitchen here just to show you another one of my girlfriend's tanks. And this is a female pied ball python. Uh, really cool little snake. She's pretty young but doing really well in here. Um, and the pied morph is one of my favorite morphs of ball pythons as well. Um, so now we will move on to uh, one of my snakes. Uh, so this guy lives in my bedroom on my dresser here and this is a Doomerals boa. His name is Doomsday. Uh, he is in a 3 foot by 18 uh, by 12 tall um, exoterra with the sliding top. Uh, which is kind of a pain. This guy is actually very high, probably the number one priority for animals that need an upgrade. Once I get into the new place, uh, this guy is, might be the first one to get an upgrade, uh, but he's a really awesome snake. And now we will come into the actual frog room. Um, it is a tiny bit of a mess in here, um, but as I said, I just need to get this video done because I'm going to have to start uh, taking things apart and tearing everything down uh, basically right after this video because I'm going to be moving everything in a few days. Uh, so here's just kind of a quick overview of what it looks like. Got kind of my workbench area here. Uh, just some tubs of my most uh, commonly used tools and supplies and stuff. Uh, I've got my desk computer over here where I do my video editing. Uh, but I think we'll start with this rack right here. These are all my thumbnails. Uh, these are all the 12 by 12 by 18 exoterras. Um, and I would actually like to get these ones upgraded as well. These are a tiny bit small for even a pair of thumbnails in my opinion. So I would like to upgrade all of them into 18 cubes at least. Um, sometime in the near future here. Uh, but starting up on this corner we have here, one second, let me close my blinds so we're not getting so many reflections. Okay, that should be a little bit better. Um, so yeah, these are the Randomea vanzellini. You can hear the male in there is actually calling right now. This is one of the females up on the wall there. Over next to them, we have the Randomea Fantastica uh, True Nominals. Uh, there's one hanging out back in the leaves there. And then down below on the next level, over here is a fairly recent acquisition. These are my uh, Ufaga Pamilio blue jeans. And these guys actually just this last week laid their first clutch of eggs. Um, I was pretty sure I had a pair. They looked like a pair, um, but I'd never heard any calling. Still haven't heard any calling from these guys. Uh, but yeah, last week they ended up laying a clutch of eggs like right on the front glass here. Um, they all ended up going bad, which isn't really uncommon for uh, first clutch. Usually it takes them a couple tries to kind of get it figured out, but um, at least that's confirmation that I do have a pair, which is really exciting. Hopefully we get some tadpoles out of those guys soon. Um, over next to them is one of my pairs of Ranadamea Imitator Chizudas. Uh, the male in this tank was actually uh, part of the group of the first ever dart frogs that I ever got. So that was about eight years ago now. So he's getting kind of up there in age for a thumbnail, but uh, still seems to be doing really well. Um, then down below that, this is another pair of the imitator Chizudas. Let's see, there's actually a tadpole in that cup right there. I've been using these solo cup shot glasses as tadpole cups recently, and I they're kind of ugly in there, but uh, they do work really well. I like how they're, they're kind of ridged on the inside, so you don't have to worry 
as much about frogs getting stuck in there. I feel like it makes it a little, little bit easier for them to get out. Not that that's ever really been a problem for me, but you know, dart frogs don't swim that well, so. Um, and then over here, we have the Ranadamea wakarii gold leg. There's one of them right there. Uh, this tank's a little dark because it's a bit overgrown. Uh, these guys are really cool frogs, um, and they have been breeding like crazy. I've got quite a few froglets from them on the way up, so uh, if you guys are interested, uh, shoot me an email or something. Um, if you're in Canada, I can only ship dart frogs within Canada, but we'll have some of these guys and a bunch of chizudas and uh, a bunch of other frogs too. So if you guys want frogs and you're in Canada, shoot me an email and I will send you an availability list. So moving over this way, um, as I said, is just my computer desk where I do editing and stuff and um, some supplies up in the closet here. And then over here we have a stand with uh, the 18 cube exoterras. Um, and these are erratus. These are the micro spots. Up above them, we have another erratus. These are the alcope. And they all look like they're hiding as well. And then up on the top of this stand is, uh, this is an 18 cube as well, but this is one of the Frogs & Co. Exoterras. Um, I do have a video building this one out on the channel if you guys are interested. Um, it's doing really well. This is the one that just kind of has the uh, the substratum as the only substrate in here. Um, and as you can see, it's doing pretty well. Uh, this one's a little darker than normal because uh, one of the bulbs, there's a double light fixture on the top here, and one of the bulbs just burnt out yesterday, and I don't have any replacements right now. So uh, it's a little darker than it should be, but I didn't have time to run out and get a new one. Oh, and uh, the frogs in here are the Ranadamea Fantastica Monte Cristo. So you can kind of see one hiding the leaves up here. Uh, there's actually a group of four of them in here. And they're a really cool frog too. Um, and then over on these stands, um, these were all ones that I built myself specifically for these tanks. So um, these are all the um, 18 by 18 by 24 exoterras. And then up on top, we have two more of the 18 cubes. So up here we have the Erratus Colombian Yellow. It's a group of four of those. I think they're all female, so I'm looking for a male for those guys. Um, over to the right, we have a, my pair of uh, Super Blue Erratus. These were uh, pretty recent builds, uh, a couple that I just kind of threw together quickly just to upgrade them. Um, but I will probably be coming through and upgrading uh, some of these tanks with like uh, better backgrounds and stuff like that eventually as well. Um, and then down below there, both of these tanks are the Dendrobates Tinctorius Azurius. Um, and they're a little bit overgrown as well, so they're a little bit dark in here. Um, I would have liked to prune these tanks a little bit better before the tour, but uh, just kind of running out of time. You can see one of the Azurius hanging out down in there. Uh, still one of my favorite frogs, just can't beat that kind of bright solid blue. And then down below them, uh, this tank is really overgrown. Um, it's been going kind of crazy, but uh, these are my Dendrobates uh, Leucomelis. This is my female down here. Uh, these are by far my oldest frogs. Um, I got them and the guy said that they were 10 years old when I bought them from him. Um, and that was like eight years ago almost. So, I mean, these guys are pushing 18 years old now. Uh, so they're getting up there too, but uh, they're still doing really well, still lay eggs every week. Uh, they've been one of my most consistent producing dart frogs out of any of them, and they are the oldest. So I'm hoping these guys uh, last for many more years too. Over here we have one of my pairs of powder blue tinctorius. Again, this one's a little overgrown. Uh, just didn't quite have time to prep all these tanks as much as I would like to before doing this tour, but uh, Those guys breed like crazy too. They're doing really well and then over on the next stand uh, There's a group of oyapox in here. I think these are all female as well. So I'm looking for a male for this group And then on this side we have my tinctorious cobalts There's a pair in here Cobalts are really cool frogs. One of the boldest of all my frogs I find as well. And then down below them, 
Uh, this is another pair of powder blues. There's the female right there. Um, over on this side, uh, we have my uh, Tinctoria Citronella. Um, and these guys are hiding too, which is unusual. These are one of the bolder frogs. These guys are almost always out and visible, but uh, no such luck right now, but I'll throw in a couple pictures for them. And as well, down below in these stands, I have all my fly cultures just in bins here um, on diatomaceous earth to keep mites out. Um, oh, and then I guess just up on top on this side, I have kind of like an air purifier fan that's turned off right now to avoid some noise. Um, extra like deli cups and everything. This is my cricket bin uh, for all my animals that need crickets. And then just a bin full of like extra cork bark and stuck stuff over here. And then on this rack right here, this is like a baker's rack. They would use for like cooling buns and stuff, uh, but this is kind of my tadpole rack. Uh, so these are all the cups with all my tadpoles that I'm raising up in here. Got quite a few of them right now. Not nearly as many as I've had in the past. Um, I've kind of cut back a little bit on collecting eggs. I was just getting way too many to keep up with, so I did stop pulling eggs for a while, but I still got quite a few tadpoles here as well. And there's also a tray. These are all springtail cultures. Um, they've almost exclusively moved over to the calcium bearing clay uh, spring springtail method. Um, and as I think I mentioned before, like I haven't really noticed much difference in the, as far as the production goes, like how many springtails you get out of them. But um, just the fact that they're so much easier to harvest and dust the springtails from these cultures, um, I've almost exclusively moved over to those ones now. Um, and then moving over to here, this is a uh, three foot tall by two foot wide by 18 deep. Um, Exoterra tank, this one houses my uh, Madagascar giant day geckos. Uh, so this is my big male on the right here with all the red. And then one of the females, it's almost solid green. So you can see kind of the contrast in the different patterns you can get in these guys. And then over here is the other female. I almost would like to upgrade this one again. I thought this was going to be big enough for the three of them, but I mean, it's a pretty big tank, but honestly, I think it could be bigger. So we might end up looking at doing like a big custom built tank uh, for this group. Oh, and I should also mention uh, down below, I have the misters. This is the reservoir for the Mist King. And then I also have a monsoon multi on here too. Uh, the monsoon does the geckos and the mist king uh, does pretty much everything else and then moving over here we have this big rack and uh, these are my grow outs so this is where i raise up all of my froglets um, or grow out um, any frogs that i've decided to hold back or they just work as like a temporary holding tank and stuff like that too but i have 12 10 gallon tanks on here and then 10 5 gallon tanks as well as a couple tubs up on the top in case all the tanks fill up. Um, yeah, so again, a lot of these frogs are ready to sell if anyone's looking for them. I have uh, citronellas, I have cobalts, I have micro spots. Uh, I have a few thumbnails. There's a little Vanzellini eye that's ready to go. Uh, I've got a bunch of chizudas. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested in any frogs, uh, let me know if you're within Canada. Uh, the weather is warming up here, so it uh, should be good to ship. And then I've got just like a water jug of RO water there up top for uh, like tadpole water and uh, filling misters and that kind of thing. Um, over here in this little bin is uh, a culture of dairy cow isopods. And then over on this side, we have two more of the 12 by 12 by 18 exoterras and these are my gold dust day geckos. You can see the male back over here. Male on this tank female in this tank. I'm separated for now because uh, I don't really think uh, these tanks are quite big enough to have multiple in the same in the same tank here. So this is gonna be another high priority. Uh, when I get to the new place is building a bigger tank um, that both of these guys can go into. And then down below them, uh, we have my rescue leopard gecko. Uh, that I kind of took over from a friend of a friend of a friend. Um, really wasn't doing very well when I got them. 
stuck shed and was really skinny, like couldn't even open his eyes, but uh, kind of nursed him back to health. He's doing a lot better now. Still needs to put on a little bit of weight, but yeah, doing a lot better than he was when I got him. So we've got a hot hide over here. There's a heat pad underneath, a ceramic heat emitter um, up here. And of course that's running on a thermostat. Um, and then just a, a little bit of a light so I can see him in there. And then we've got a humid hide and then just a couple other hides, a little water dish. And just a paper towel substrate for now, um, just because I really wanted to be able to keep an eye on him and keep him sterile. Uh, well, I was kind of nursing him back to health there, but uh, I don't know, I may or may not switch that to a proper substrate at some point. I know some people say that paper towel is the best thing to keep them on just because you don't have to worry about impaction or anything like that. So uh, we'll see what happens. He's doing really good in this setup right now though. Um, and this is a 20 gallon long aquarium. Uh, that just has one of these screen tops with the locking clips on there to make sure you can't climb out. And then down below him, um, we have another 20 gallon long and these are my Tinctorius Robertus. Uh, the pair in here, these are on the channel pretty recently. I uh, can see one hanging out over here. There's another one hiding back there. You just kind of see the yellow on his head. Uh, these guys are usually out and about all the time, but of course when I go to film a video, they, they decide to hide. Um, and then down in this one, uh, we have a couple of cinnamon tree frogs. Um, these guys are pretty cool. Don't really have very good pictures or video of them because they are very strictly nocturnal it seems. So um, it's pretty hard to get pictures of them in the dark. They are just kind of in a water uh, substrate or a water bottom tank right now. Uh, normally I have like a little pump running in the back that uh, kind of splashes water on the back there. Uh, I've just turned it off for the video because it is a little bit noisy. Um, so I will be doing something. I actually want to do a, a proper tank for these guys too. So they'll be getting an upgrade in the near future as well. And then over here we have another 18 cube and this is my crested gecko toffee. Uh, she's kind of hiding in the back corner there. Uh, but she's doing really well, um, getting really big. She's got to be getting close to full size now. Um, and I would really like to get her um, upgraded into uh, something taller as well soon. So that's going to be another high priority at the new place. And then last but not least, um, over here, this is another 20 gallon long uh, that I've just kind of turned up on its side uh, to make it a vertical tank. And there is a bunch of morning geckos in here. Um, so this one was basically just um, because my girlfriend's tank, uh, the morning geckos in there were kind of breeding like crazy and was starting to get a little bit overpopulated. So um, I started catching out a bunch of the babies and put them in here uh, just to just to thin them out a little bit and uh, keep a closer eye on them because they can get kind of lost in that big tank there. But um, I would like to upgrade these guys too into a proper tank at some point. Um, there's a bunch in here, probably more than I want to keep, so I do have a, a couple morning geckos for sale as well if you guys want those guys. Let's see one of them sitting on a leaf right there. But I think there's like eight or nine of them in here right now. Um, but yeah, I just kind of threw this one together quickly uh, just to get them out of that other tank. Also because we're going to be breaking that one down to move it. Um, so I wanted to kind of take the geckos out of there and take stock of what we had. So. This one's kind of temporary, but I would like to set up a dedicated morning gecko varium uh, sometime soon as well. Oh, and then up in this little deli cup, we have three more really tiny, like freshly hatched morning geckos. They're just a little bit too small, I think, to be in with the other group. So I'm uh, gonna grow them out a little bit more in there and then they can go in with the rest of them. Um, but yeah, I think that is all of my animals. Take one last look around. This is probably the last time I'm going to see this frog room. Can't complain too much about being in here, but uh, it is a little bit smaller than I would like, so it is going to be really nice to get into a bigger space. Oh, 
Oh, and uh, one more animal to show you, if I am showing all my animals here. Uh, this is Datsun, my dog. Uh, he's half Bernese Mountain Dog, a quarter Border Collie, and a quarter Akita. He is getting close to 13 years old now, um, but he's still doing really well. And, uh, you know, no offense to any of the frogs, but uh, this is definitely my favorite out of all my pets. He's not too impressed about uh, being made to sit still to be recorded here, but he is a really good boy. And he's also getting a little bit antsy because it's almost supper time. So that's gonna do it for this tour. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this frog room tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, remember to get subscribed so that you don't miss uh, the moving videos and the setup in the new frog room. Do me a favor and like this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe share it with your friends, really helps out the channel. Any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions for future videos, uh, leave them down below in the comments there. Uh, thanks so much for watching guys, and until next time, happy frogging.